uh, Jason Turner. Five nine eight five North eight hundred West Frankton. All right, I had a quick question though for you before you start. You guys were talking about a corner lot. Where is the rear of the house on the corner lot? Because that came up with I was talking to Lindsay about that on the phone. So where's the rear of the house? There is no rear of the house on a corner lot. Okay, so I, I, that's what I'm, I'm curious yeah. about. I want to get that answer because me and him spoke about that. Okay, I'm gonna. I've got some pictures for you guys and all that, and this is a little bit. Uh, thank you for letting me speak too. All right. Intermodal transport began in 1936 and took off in the 60s. In the 70s, saw the actual full-size container being used across all modes of transportation, which is a 40-footer. I've been a truck driver for 32 years. I've hauled containers in and out of all the rail yards in Chicago. The majority of intermodal freight transported is retail goods. In a phone call between myself and Lindsay, he stated he did not know what chemicals were hauled in the containers. I've never hauled any RQ hazmat chemical requiring placards in an intermodal box container. The majority of all chemicals are manufactured in the United States for domestic consumption. The international distribution is done in an intermodal tank. I'm going to hand you guys a picture of the intermodal tank. And you guys can pass it out. This is what's actually it's hauled in. And if, it, if the audience would like one too, I've got a second one. So that's what the tank is. All right. Um, these intermodal tanks are never resold. They are strictly prohibited for resale. We purchased our container three years ago. We spent a lot of money maintaining this property, altogether about $400,000. So when somebody says, comes to me with a letter saying that my property looks like crap because of a container, I spent a lot of money. You should have seen the property beforehand. Beforehand, it was a mess. We spent a lot of money. We got a lot of mowing equipment stored in that thing, about $30,000 worth. So it's, but anyways, let me go on. Um, we have a double wide as the sole neighbor to the west of us in which she has five shanty sheds made of rusted metal, which Mr. Lindsay was speaking about rusted metal. Uh, we have no issues with this property. I wanted to pass this picture along because you're gonna hear about what the code is on those. Uh, we have no issues with this property, even though the ordinance state only three accessory buildings per lot. The other neighbors are quite a distance away. No neighbor filed a complaint. It was from Tom Weitzel. Um, nor the shanty sheds. I mentioned the rusty shanty sheds for a reason. Lindsey Brown stated that the containers rust in two years. My container has been on my lot for three years and has a prior service record, yet no rust. All metal rusts, with a few exceptions, like stainless steel and aluminum. That's awful expensive to build one out of that, you know. So, uh, rust is a common, uh, common amongst most metals. So what I did, I went around and started because Lindsay was concerned about rust from these containers. And I took several pictures of items. One's my top card. You see rust. This is one that's interesting because it's a, a line pole with the ground rod going underground the ground with rust on it. This is my neighbor about a half a mile away. They have rust and a hole in their barn. And we're talking about aesthetics. So if they've got a hole in their barn, and that's, that's the metal that Lindsay's talking about. Here's a rusted fence pole. Ground into the ground. Rusted fence wire. And I'm going to get to this one here, which is the galvanized roofing that Lindsay was talking about, which goes through a process and other metal roofing that goes through a quote process. So, uh, hopefully the county doesn't start complaining about these items being rusted as well, like Lindsay was concerned about. Lindsay Brown stated that containers are only painted, but metal roofing goes through a process. Intermodal containers are built with core tin metal, which is also known as weathered steel. 
and is designed to eliminate the need for painting. Self-weathering forms an oxide that prevents further rusting. And at the time of manufacture, the intermodal co container's coarse tin steel is sandblasted, corrugated, primered, and then painted. Unlike what Lindsay said, he said it's just painted. <clears throat> the time period is 20 to 25 years from manufacture to rust. Core tin is used in various other structures, such as outdoor public statues. The floors are made of uh, curing and apatong woods that resist moisture. I think somebody else spoke of that. But they present moisture, that's what they're used for. On the other hand, the process used for metal roofing, as Lindsay said, is to use an elastomeric silicone or an acrylic paint. This coating has a much shorter rust prevention lifespan. These panels do not cross oceans or do they, they do not ride on Indiana calcium chloride coated roads. I also didn't understand Lindsay's uh, lipstick on a pig quote that had nothing to do with containers. Um, these intermodal containers are solid and 20 times better built than any Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, or corner lot shed. These intermodal containers are built to be stacked up to four high on a ship and going across that salty ocean, which is more salty than our roads. Um, they are 10 times more secure. That's why I put $30,000 equipment in it. I don't put it in a wooden shed that I get off a corner lot. I don't put it in a pole barn, which can the size to be ripped off. People drive up and down want to steal my stuff. Um, anyways, I wanted to show you a picture of how they're stacked on a container ship. You can see they're four high. Most of those containers will be containing 40 to 50,000 pounds of food. And Lindsay, most of it's retail goods, Barbie dolls and other things that your kids buy. Uh, price of an intermodal container is the fraction of a shed or pole barn of similar size. The intermodal container will require less maintenance than a comparable shed or pole barn because they're solid. Solid. They'll last forever. The intermodal container can be easily retrofitted to change its appearance. And before I go on, I, I was going to file a variance until Tom Weitzel said he was giving nobody any hope. So I pass that out. But I'm not going to spend $400, Mr. Weitzel. Hey, sir. Sir. Please address that. I'm not going to spend $400 on a variance and get rejected like the gal did that wanted the fence around her. Because you guys were talking about a fence. She got rejected. I, don't, I wasn't here to see the meeting, but I heard about it. But to sit there and think of me, myself spending $400 for a variance, $400 for a permit, get rejected, come back and file another variance, I'd like to see some parameters or some, something more to this so I know what, what I'm going to ask for. It's a very good variance. It was going to build a pole barn over it. You'd never see it. But when I'm told by Mr. Weitzel that there's no hope, that I will not keep mine. I was told that. That's why I was asking about the corner lot, you know, because I said mine was on the side of a hill. It's beside the house. Well, according to you, Lindsay, I live on the corner lot. It's behind the house. And it's actually further back, set back than the house. But anyways, let me go on. I say all this in the sport of using the intermodal containers as a common sense approach to the ever-increasing inflation that the typical American family is seeing. Sorry, so I'm boring. <laughs> yeah, we do have other people that would like to speak. I'm almost done. Do you have any more comments know, that pertain done. to the text amendment? Yeah, please. to ask a family to remove a container is costly and burdensome. I would ask that the common sense is used and not the melodramatics about environmental hazards posed when there are not, because you guys seen the actual tanker, that's what holds the chemicals. Um, the government is supposed to work for the people and not against them. The mere fact that there are hundreds of these intermodal containers in Madison County alone should speak volumes to what the taxpayers and voters want, and not what one commissioner wants. And if you're tagging a hundred of these containers and haven't figured it out that the taxpayer and voter has spoken, then you need to resign. Thank you. Thank you. So I'd like to make a comment real quick. So I appreciate, you know, the melodramatics of using my name a thousand and one times, and I appreciate the YouTube video uh, that you made of me. Very nice, should I say. But at the same time, uh, intimidation is not, is not a factor for me. I believe in protecting the citizens of Madison County, 
as a whole and believing that the citizens of Madison County probably would not like to see semi-colored uh, shipping containers all plastered along the, the county line and on the sides of the roads and as people drive down the, high, the highways want to see country areas and see shipping containers. This is not a uh, third world country, this is the United States of America. And so I will stand by the things that I did say and not be intimidated by somebody think they can just continue to keep using my name like it's going to make me be scared or something. Uh, and it's sad to hear when somebody says, you know, salty, going across salty oceans, salt causes ruts. Common sense. Yeah. Thank you for that information. I appreciate it. So, you know, understanding the things of this and looking at it, I think sometimes we as commissioners get put in positions to where we're supposed to be here to protect all the county and not just our friends or our family. And we have to look at things as a holistic approach and not for what's going to happen right now, but what will happen in the future, down the line. So when we look at protecting our county and making ordinances and zone changes, we got to look at for not what's going to happen today to, for our friends and family, but how it's going to be for our kids and our grandkids in the future. And that's, that's all I have to say. Did you sign in, sir? 